actually teaching chapter five a little bit differently than I did last year, so I want to go ahead and redo some of those videos. So today in class, we talked about perpendicular bisectors of a triangle and angle bisectors of a triangle and points of concurrency. I'm going to try and go through here with you how we do those constructions and then what we've learned. So the first thing I'm going to do is this one is going to be my perpendicular bisectors. And when I make perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, that means I'm going to have a line segment that bisects each of these sides of the triangle and that bisector is going to intersect the side set the side at 90 degree angle. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set my compass width about two thirds of the distance of the segment that I'm going to bisect. If I make it too long, it's just going to go off the paper. If I make it too short, the arcs that I make are not going to intersect. So I put the point of the compass at one of the vertices, this is vertex A, and I make a arc mark to each side of the line segment. Now I'm going to take my compass. I'm not going to change the compass setting. I'm going to move it to vertex B. I'm going to take that back around and I'm going to make a mark so that it intersects the arc mark that I made when I did this at vertex A. Basically I have made four sets of arc marks. This all of the points on this arc here are equidistance from point B. Sorry, on this arc mark are equidistance from point A. When I do that twice, I now have two points that are equidistance from both A and B. I'm going to draw a straight line through those two points, and that is my first perpendicular bisect. And this bisector would bisect segment AB at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to do the same thing now for segment BC. Now, when I do this, because BC is a bit longer, I probably need to open my compass a little bit wider. It's okay to change the compass settings for each of the perpendicular bisectors. But when you're creating that perpendicular bisector, you don't want to change it. Meaning when I switch from making the bisector of segment AB, I can change the compass setting. But now that I'm going to put the compass on point B and point C, I don't want to change the compass setting. So I make an arc on one side of the line segment. I make an arc on the other side of the line segment. I'm now going to move the compass to vertex C. Once again, I don't want to change the compass setting here. I make an arc mark on one side of line segment BC, and I make it on the other side of line segment BC. I now can take, if I was doing this, I would probably use a straight edge, but since I have the Promethean software, I'm going to draw a line segment that goes through the two points created by those intersecting arcs. I can also start to see it looks like my bisectors should all meet at this point. I'm now going to do the same thing a third time for line segment AC. I'm going to make an arc mark on one side. I'm going to create an arc making a mark on the other side of line segment AC. I'm going to move my compass over to point C 
and I'm going to make another arc mark, which sadly I'm not going to be able to see. So in this case, I'm actually going to redo that because I'm off my paper and that's going to cause me a lot of problems. So I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to move this in a little bit. Make an arc mark there. I'm going to make an arc mark there. So now I'm not using this line and I'm not using that arc mark. And I'm going to take my compass, move it over to C, and now I'll be able to make an arc mark on the paper. Actually, let's make this a little bit longer so I have a little bit more room here to move this. And then I'm going to bring this up here make the line there. Move this out of the way and create a line segment that goes through those two points. And I can see that I got really close here to making a point where all three intersect. So I have actually created three perpendicular bisectors. So let's take a little notes here. We did this in class, but in case you need it, particular bisectors. They intersect at a point of concurrency known as the circumcenter. So a point of concurrency for our intents and purposes is basically the center of a triangle. There are about 400 centers of triangles. We're going to learn about four of them. We're going to need to understand how to work with these four. So they're going to intersect at a point of concurrency known as the circumcenter. And the circumcenter is equal distance from all three vertices. Okay, that means if I measured A to this point, C to this point, or B to this point, all of the numbers would be the same. I can check that that works by putting my compass point on the circumcenter, taking my compass, putting the tip of my compass on any of the vertices, and now I'm going to draw a circle. And when I draw that circle, I can see that that circle does hit the triangle at all three vertices. The other thing that I can do here and this is where I will get into a little bit of math in class tomorrow. I'm going to go here. I'm going to click that, click that. So what I'm saying is if I draw a line from vertex B to the circumcenter, from vertex A to the circumcenter, or from the circumcenter to vertex C, all three of those black lines are going to be congruent and we can actually do problems. So for instance, let's say I set up a problem and I said that line there is, just make up a number here, x plus 12. And let's say I said this side here was 2x minus 6. And I said find the value of x. Well, since give this a point, I'm going to call that point P. So 
So now let's say I told you that BP was equal to X plus 12 and AP was equal to 2X minus 6. And I told you to solve for X. That would mean that X plus 12 is equal to 2X minus 6 because these are the distances of the vertices to the circumcenter. So if I subtract X from both sides, I get 12 equals 2X minus 6. Add 6 to both sides, I get 18 is equal, actually since I subtracted X, that should have been 18 is equal to X minus is equal to x. So what I'm doing here is subtracting x from both sides. 12 equals x minus 6, added 6 to both sides, x equals 18. That means that, and let's check that that works, that would mean that this length 18 plus 12 would be 30, and over here 2 times 18 is 36, minus 6 is 30. So that gives you an idea of the constructions of perpendicular bisectors, and how you would actually use them to solve a problem. One of the things you also need to know about circumcenters is that the location of the circumcenter will vary based upon the type of triangle you have. If you draw the perpendicular bisectors for an acute triangle, the circumcenter, which we're going to call point P, is going to lie inside the triangle. If you draw a right triangle, the circumcenter, point P, is going to sit on what is actually the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And if you draw an obtuse triangle, point P, the circumcenter, is going to lie outside of the triangle. The circle with the center of P in any of these cases is said to be circumscribed about the triangle. It goes through the vertices of the triangle. When we get into our chapter on circles, we'll learn a lot of things about the relationship of those lines. So now we are going to talk about the angle bisectors of a triangle. So an angle bisector, as we learned much earlier in the year, is going to divide the angle into two congruent segments. So we need to create an angle bisector for vertex A, for vertex B, and for vertex C. So the first thing we're going to do is draw an arc with our compass sitting at vertex A. Then I'm going to take the point of the compass and I'm going to draw arc marks with the point of the compass sitting at the intersection of the sides of angle A and the arc, the first arc that I drew. And now I'm going to use my straight line tool and I'm going to draw a line segment from vertex A through those intersecting arc marks. And I've created my first angle bisector. I think angle bisectors to me are much easier to make than perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to draw an arc from vertex B. I'm going to put the point of the compass where that original arc mark intersected each side of the angle. I'm going to draw an arc mark there. I'm going to draw an arc mark there. And I'm going to draw a straight line from vertex B through the intersecting arcs. And now I'm going to do the same thing at vertex C. draw an arc mark here, 
move the compass, draw an arc mark here, move the compass, draw an arc mark here, move the compass out of the way, and create the third angle bisector. And I see that I came pretty close here. All three angle bisectors go through the same point. That's my point of concurrency. I actually want to change that color dot there. That's my point of concurrency. So let's take some notes here. For make this angle bisectors intersect at a point of concurrency called the in center. No matter what type of triangle I make, the in-center is going to be inside the triangle. The in-center is, equi in is equidistance from the sides In center is equidistance from the sides of the triangle. Now, in class, we kind of eyeballed it a little bit, but if we really want to get exact in our construction and make it work, that means on a perpendicular line. So we need to create a line from here to this side that's going to be perpendicular. As I said, in class we kind of eyeballed it. We can actually do it exactly similar to what we did when we bisect an angle. I'm going to make an arc all the way under this line. I want to find the exact point here to here that would create a 90 degree angle. So I created an arc. Go over here, create a mark there. Come over here. Create another mark here. And if I actually now draw a line segment that goes from the in center Through these arc marks, I actually have created a point here to this line that intersects at a 90 degree angle. I now can put the tip of my pencil there, move my pencil tip put it right on that circle and create a perfect inscribed circle. The cir circle that sits inside the triangle with a center at the in center is going to hit the three sides of the triangle. Now, since I have a perfectly 90 degree line here, there are actually some things I can do. So it might be kind of hard to see. I want to shade that all in there so you can see that right there. That is a 90 degree angle. So I have a right triangle. That means that I can use properties of Pythagorean theorem. So you should know the Pythagorean theorem. Let's say I say that this side length here is 16. And let's say I say this side length is 5. And I want to find 
this length of B, I'm going to call this point I for in center. So let's see, I want to find the length of BI. BI is the hypotenuse. I should know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If A squared plus B squared equals C squared, 16 and 5, either those can be A squared or either those can be uh, B squared. I know my hypotenuse is this BI. Look, by the magic computer, I fixed that. 256 plus 25 is BI quantity squared. So 256 plus 25 is 281. And the square root of 281 is 16.763. So if I said round to the nearest tenth, and that's an example of the type of math you would do involving angle bisectors and their point of concurrency. I'm going